Hi, so, these things, hey, double air batteries, they're not particularly sexy, which is probably why we don't really think much about them, but the market for these in 20, 2019 was at $7.48 billion. Considering these are about a dollar each, that's a lot of these batteries, and in fact they are the scourge of electronic recycling because they're surprisingly difficult to recycle and they mostly just end up in landfill. So this has become an issue, particularly in the growth of electronics, of course, where it's supported by disposable non-rechargeable AA batteries. Despite the growth in rechargeable batteries, these are dominating the market and creating a huge recycling problem. The market is predicted to grow, incidentally, by 2020-2017 to $10.7 billion. So that's a lot of these materials. Now, anybody who knows me knows I have a consistent and ongoing love affair with this stuff. Paper, for me, is one of the most amazing engineered products, but it's another one of those non-sexy products. We just find it everywhere and so we don't think much about it. But it has a huge history. It's incredibly engineered. Of course, it's ultimately recyclable. I mean, this is one of those industries that has been plagued by this. So over the last two to three hundred years, they have pretty much sorted out their act. The waste stream from paper mills these days, the good ones, is next to zero. Their recyclability, their biodegradability, the, the way they maintain the forests to feed the paper stock, all that kind of stuff makes this as a mass-produced industry one of the world leaders in looking after that kind of thing. So it is a material that is hugely, inter hugely interesting. And of course, I've done videos on the top 10 uses of this material, using this material to, uh, a building uh, to build structures, all kinds of things. One thing that it's also recognised about for is the potential it has for making batteries. Now, when you look into the history of this, the uh, most common claim is that the paper battery was invented in 2009 by Stanford. Stanford seemed particularly good at a couple of things. Self-publicity and grabbing any idea of their own. Because it took me about five minutes to find research papers on this going far back beyond that. When they first invented the dry cell, of course, it was about the 1880s, what they did was put plaster of Paris. And it wasn't long until they started putting cardboard in to make the dry cell, where cardboard as a form of paper was forming the dry cell. So I would argue it's about the 1880s that the paper battery first came to life. Now, it's in 1983 when you first saw a research paper on it, and that was where they'd... Um, They'd made the paper by traditional paper making methods, but in that early mix they'd added carbon. Then when you went through the machine, took out the water and made the paper, you ended up with the carbon impregnated paper and that was used to make batteries and that was 1983. Now in 1992 there was a research paper about using electroconductive polymers along with paper based batteries. 2005 was one that I found a urine activated paper based battery and it was only 2009 when the Stanford paper came out so it came out a lot later than the first developments of the paper battery. So the paper battery falls into two types. There's a type that we discussed earlier where you're impregnating the paper with battery materials. And then there's a type where you put the battery material on top of the paper. Now because paper batteries have a huge amount of um, things to recommend them. And these are things like um, lightweight, flexibility, cheapness of manufacture, it fits into current manufacturing formats so it's ease of manufacture, obviously it can be any size you want and it's just a list after list of things that are good about a paper battery. About the only disadvantage I could find actually was they're prone to tearing which didn't seem much of a disadvantage because you know you're going to put them in something and resist the temptation to tear them you're going to have yourself a pretty decent battery. Now most of the research is going into using paper as the base material and printing techniques on top of it to print the anode and cathode material. The paper battery is defined by most of the material is based on paper stock. Now, paper stock obviously is cellulose and it has some interesting properties. One of them is that it retains water, it's hygroscopic. 
It has great wicking capabilities, so the water can be sucked up into the paper really, really easily. It aids with ion transport, particularly when you think about the research into um, cellulose nanofibrils and how they're conductive in themselves. So there's lots of things why you might want to use paper as a battery. Now, of course, this paper, it came out four days ago. There was a news report on it two days ago. Now, it's an open access paper, so I'm going to give the link to the paper so that if you want to pull it down, you can actually find that, and we're going to make it. It's really quite simple to make. It's based on a number of inks. So let's make those inks. I don't mean to go into depth in any particular recipe because it's all there in the paper and it's an open source paper. But the first ink consists of these four things. Shellac, which is clearly the binder. Ethanol, used to mix it all up with. A bit of polyethylene glycol to stop it dehydrating completely and keep the shellac flexible. And then the main ingredient being graphite, 5 to 7 microns. You dissolve this, uh, the shellac in the ethanol, add the graphite, mix it up and then add some of that. And it's the same kind of routine, but like I say, the details are in the paper, so all I'm going to do is make this up to the weight percentage as the paper tells me. So I mix those four ingredients together, and that is my cathode ink, which is basically a graphite ink. And the binder is shellac, the carrier is ethanol, and the plasticizer is polyethylene glycol. So that's that one done. We need to make this, which is the anode ink, and it's exactly the same thing, only we've replaced the graphite with zinc powder. The proportions are different but again it's given in the paper and that makes us our anode ink. So we've got our anode and our cathode ink and now we need our current collector ink. The current collector ink is just like the cathode ink only you stick a bit of carbon black in there. So we end up with three inks. Here they are, the anode ink which is the grey one, the cathode ink which is the silver and graphitic one and the current collector ink which is black courtesy of the uh, conductive carbon. The conductive ion carbon I used was Ketchum 600D, but any conductive carbon is going to do it. I just so happen to have that one. Now you need two more things. This is a three molar solution of ordinary table salt, so sodium chloride in water. And we dip the paper in there and let it dry, and then this is a mixture of canuba wax and rapeseed oil. And yes, just ordinary rapeseed oil and a bit of wax. And you melt them in the ratio of 50-50. We're gonna do that on a hot plate until the wax mixes in with the oil. That will be a waterproof coating when we come to making the actual battery. So let's get that heated up and melted. On one side of the dried paper, I've painted the cathode already. We depaint the anode on the other side, making sure to lap onto that wax section a little bit, which remember is the hydrophobic zone, and that's the zone where the connections are going to go. So we paint a square of our anode ink on there. Then when that's dried, we can paint on the current collector ink, which is just a strip down the middle. And you connect the wire to the current connector ink, just by making sure that the wire is on that hydrophilic zone, putting a blob of ink between the wire and the plate. Okay. And that's it, ready to go. Now it's dry, so nothing's going to happen to it until we dip it in water. Which means, of course, it has an infinite shelf life, because it's just never going to wear out. And the bit you dip is this clear bit there. When you dip that in just plain old water, of course, the thing's already salt-soaked. The water will wick up the paper, activate the battery, and we should get a reading out of that. Okay, so this is ordinary tap water. Let's dip it in and see what happens. <laughs> and indeed we're getting a reading. It's at 0.65 of a volt and it's going up, so clearly as it wicks up then the um, internal resistance is going to drop and we should get a better reading. But what they did next in the paper was make two of these and try to run a digital clock. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Okay, so I've made up two of these and we're going to see what the authors say and connect it here to the back of this clock. <laughs> so it kept up, oh, light's gone off, clock's still on. So it can in fact run a digital clock from two bits of paper, which is exactly what the authors claim. And they reckon it'll run for about two and a half hours and something like that. So the authors reckon that that has more power than a AA battery, and given it's a gram for gram, I can believe that that's true actually. But on the plus side of things, of course, remember this is a $7.48 billion market, so that's a lot of batteries going to landfill. Just the fact it's made from paper, carbon and zinc with a bit of table salt in there is going to make that 
Well, completely biodegradable. Remember, the paper industry is astonishing for its efforts in um, recycling stuff and making that industry clean. It's one of the reasons I love paper. But I thought I would share that with you because, as I say, it's a four-day-old paper. Just came out. Innovative technique. Loved it tremendously. Thought I'd share it with you. And, of course, it's easy to do at home. Now, remember, that paper is open source. So anybody can get it down and read it. I've left the instructions on how to do that. The actual recipe in detail is in the paper. I just skipped over it very quickly just to show you what can actually be done. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.